So many times when we make a necklace, we focus on the pendant, the part that's front and center, and the chain or whatever is going around the sides and back is an afterthought. Today I thought I would try to mix that up a little bit and use the chain that's going around the sides as a design element pointing towards the pendant. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another jewelry making video at keepsakecrafts.net. So I had a fairly modest pendant for my necklace in mind here. Just this cute little dragonfly charm that came from Dollar Bead Box. But what I wanted to do was make elements of the necklace that actually pointed to it. So almost like an arrow. And the way I'm going to do that is by using a spacer on each side. So here I have a couple of two hole spacers. I apologize, I don't know where these came from. The idea I have here, let me move these out of the way for a moment is to string through these holes and you can see as you do that these strands actually end up pointing right to the center of the necklace. That's basically the design I have in mind and of course we'll do some interesting beads. These are kind of different. These are 10 millimeter check glass tabular squares in opaque turquoise with travertine. So I'm kind of going for greens and bronzes today. So the idea is just to have the beads decreasing in size. This is a pretty wide spacer. You could go narrower for a subtler effect. I thought it was an interesting way of showcasing these tabular squares and just having some different shapes. And I love the way the filigree on the spacers really goes well with my pendant. I thought I would give the pendant a little bit more presence by dangling it from a bead cone. And I think what I'm going to do are actually make some loops of seed beads that will come out of the cone and then through the loop of the dragonfly, just to give it a little bit more interest. Some more travertine. This, a, these are four millimeter check glass beads in turquoise brown travertine. So that goes well. And then for some contrast, these are check glass drook beads. Uh, I've forgotten the color. By the way, if you are ever interested in the materials and supplies that I use on a particular piece in a video, you should know that I always make a blog post to go with these videos and you will always find a link to it up in the upper right of the video. There's a little eye that you can click on and then there'll be a drop down list of things that I've linked to it. Those are called the cards, the little cards that you can link to different things. My blog post will always be on one of those or you can find it down below in the description box and that is accessed different ways depending on the device you're on. So if you're on a laptop, it's I think you click show more. If you're on a tablet or an iPhone, there's a little tiny black arrow down in the bottom right below the video. And that will always lead you to my blog post. And at my blog post, like I said, I have links to products and more information. This is the question you guys ask me all the time. And I always feel bad when it takes me a few days to get back to you with an answer because you could have answered it yourself simply by going to the blog post. So what I'm doing here is just taking a little time and laying out a pattern with these beads. You could do it sort of random, but I'm in the mood today for doing it symmetrically and in a pattern. The longer your beads are from the spacer to your piece, the more narrowly or finely tapered your line will be. So depending on how strong of a triangular shape you want there. And then these are so, you know, turquoise brown travertine. It's kind of why I, I, the colors all go together just because of that brown travertine that's in there. I'm just laying out one side at a time. Of course, I'll have to make sure I have enough beads to do the pattern on the other side or I'll have to get creative. I kind of like that. I like the way those bronzy ones sort of pop out when I do that. Let's get a little long. Maybe there. And of course, this is subject to change as I'm stringing it. It may look rather different once I have the beads on. So I may want to change it then. Since let's see, I'm, I'm using three, six, nine, twelve. I need to make sure I have at least 12 of these. So I don't think I want to repeat this pattern up here because I won't have enough beads. So many times my designs are driven by how many beads I have. Maybe it's not the way to do it, but that's just the way it works out sometimes. 
And uh, I think often in design of any sort, limitations help you to be more creative, really. Where you were going to do something a certain way by not being able to, you come up with a different solution, which is often better and more interesting than the way you were planning on doing it if you hadn't had the limitation. I think I'm liking that. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some bead stringing wire and put all this on there and get an idea of how it's going to look. One thing as I was stringing, I realized I kind of needed to figure out how I was going to hang my pendant before I got the sides strung. There's a couple ways you could do it. You could just use a head pin and make loops. But like I said, I wanted to do some seed beads. So what I've done here is strung a little over an inch, about 16 seed beads. Just do whatever works proportionately to what you have. I have it centered pretty much on my bead stringing wire. And I've got about 18 inches, plenty of bead stringing wire. And I've got some crimps here. And what I want to, what I want to do is put the crimp over both wires slide it down to the loop. I don't want it too tight, but just kind of snug it up to hold it in place. Then it won't be sliding around. This is going to be hidden inside that bead cone, but this will just hold everything. So I'm, I'm not even using crimping pliers, just chain nose pliers to flatten it, give a tug. I was thinking of doing two loops of the seed beads, but they wouldn't fit through this, so you may have to consider that depending on what you have for a pendant or a charm in the center. Here's something you can do if you ever find yourself with a seed bead that's being difficult. It's not always the best solution, but you can actually just get a pair of pliers, hold it over a trash can, turn your head away and crunch and actually just break it out get it out of your way. There we go. That's better. <laughs> These are glass beads, so make sure that you do that in a safe way. You don't want little bits of glass flying into your eyes or somebody else's. I tested this all out first. Just slid that. So that'll be my pendant. I like that. That looks kind of interesting and just a little bit different. Now for how to string the other strand, I have a thought. Let's see if this works. I've got one side of my pattern already strung. So I think what I'm going to do, let's see. Because I don't have room through this, unless I use really, really small seed beads and I don't feel like going and choosing different seed beads. I'm just going to slide that down through the bead cone, through the loop that I made with the seed beads, and back up through the cone. And I think that will, yeah, that will work. So I'm going to go ahead and center my bead stringing wires and I'll finish stringing this one side so we can see if we like the look of it. So I've gone ahead and strung one half of the necklace and I'm pretty happy with this. Now that it's all strung and they're coming together at the ends, you can see what I meant by the longer you make these legs, the more tapered. So if they're short, they're gonna be way out and if they're longer, then they'll be just more fine. And then there's the width of your spacer to keep in mind. So to finish these, on this end, I just threw a bead on here. The next thing I'm going to do is add a crimp over both wires. You could just skip the bead and go right to the crimp. Love my one-step crimper. Don't forget, like I said, check out the link in the upper right or in the description box to go to my blog post where I'll have links to the tools and things that I love to use. Make sure that's secure. So I'm certain that's not going anywhere. I'm going to trim off one of these wires. So I guess I actually cut, cut this way too long, but that's okay. I'd rather have it too long than too short. I'm just going to pick up my crimp cover with my crimping pliers. Not too long ago, I did a review of a product. It was uh, crimp cover closers. 
Honestly, I just find them annoying and I've kind of gone back to just using my crimping pliers to add crimp covers. <laughs> just my personal take on it. I just found them really irritating to use. So what we've done here is gotten this down to one strand of wire. I think I'm going to put a bead in between the crimp covers instead of having two stacked on top of each other. Then another crimp, and this will be to finish the necklace. I've got some wire protectors here. You can skip these. They aren't 100% necessary, but they are nice. They're just a nice way of finishing your jewelry. If you want to learn more about wire protectors and why I like to use them and how to use them, uh, I made a video, and that'll be linked in those cards in the upper right that I was telling you about. So you go through one channel of that little horseshoe shape. There's a channel around that outside, the rounded part, and it, the wire just fits right in there. You go through the other. If your findings are closed, you want to add them now. I just have a bit of chain that's going around the back of the necklace. Bring your wire back through that crimp and pull it up snug. Go ahead and flatten that crimp and add a crimp cover as before. Always test, make sure it's secure before you trim that wire. Now that's a nice finish, having the bead in between the two crimp covers. This looks more like a more purposeful design. When you get down to this end, you may have to do, see there's a little bit of slack in here because of the way these are looped, you may have to do a little fiddling and adjusting and repeat on the other side and you're done. So here's another look at the project that we made. I hope you found this video helpful. If you would like to get bonus tutorials that I don't share on my YouTube channel, you might check out my Patreon page where you can get extras for yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Happy creating. Bye-bye.